Good morning everyone and welcome to Sophie's Vet School. If you have a lovely pet, you must take care of them. Listen to Sophie the Vet, I'll help you with your friend. Love them, help them, learn it's cool. Come and join in Sophie's Vet School. Hi everyone, some of you have met me before. I'm Sophie and I'm a vet. And today we're going to talk all about your dogs, how to keep them lovely and happy and healthy. So if you are meeting a dog that you've never met before, you must always ask the owner before you touch them. So that's a really important thing to remember. Don't go racing up to a dog that you don't know and touch them because they might be scared of people. And always remember, after you've been playing with your dogs, especially if they might have licked your hands, that you wash your hands afterwards. So let's get the first thing out of the way, which is looking at how do we know if your dog is feeling happy? Now, there's a few little signs that they can show you. And it's important to pick up on these signs because dogs do like to have their own space sometimes, like we do. Look at this lovely pooch. He looks pretty happy, right? Now, what are some of the signs? Well, his tail is pointing upwards. And if this was a video, it would probably be wagging lots too, which is a really great sign. It's a nice, relaxed, busy wag. That is a really great thing. Also, this dog's ears look lovely and floppy and relaxed. And his face looks like he's looking at us and he's, he looks like he wants to play and his body is lovely and relaxed. He's listening, he's interacting, and he's waiting to play. A bit like this lovely pooch. Look at that gorgeous face. He's saying, come on then, let's have a lovely game. He's listening to every word that you say. Sometimes when dogs are feeling really relaxed and happy, they might like to lean against your legs or lean on you like this lovely dog. Look, he's having a lovely cuddle, a little snooze, feeling lovely and relaxed, body's nice and relaxed, feeling really great. Now, when will you know if your dog's feeling a bit nervous or worried? Well, there are a few telltale signs. Now, look at this dog. He looks worried, right? He's got a really scared face. But some of the things that you can see there is that his tail is down. Sometimes they tuck it right underneath between their back legs. So instead of being nice and high and waggy and fun, he's feeling really nervous. And those ears are very flat. Sometimes when dogs are feeling angry as well, their ears will go flat against their head. But his ears are looking really worried. And his eyes are too. His whole body is stiff and worried. Now, sometimes when dogs are feeling nervous about something, they do this they lick their lips lots. And that's a sign they might be feeling worried. Sometimes when dogs come to see me at the vet, they lick their lips lots because they're really nervous. And another thing they might do is yawn. Look at this lovely pooch having a big yawn. If a dog is feeling worried, you can actually lick your lips and yawn at them to say, hey guys, I'm all right, I'm not a threat, I'm not gonna hurt you. It's a really nice thing to do. But one thing you mustn't do to a dog that's feeling nervous is this, show your teeth. Smiling at a dog and showing your teeth, if they don't know you or they're feeling worried, can make you look like a threat, can make you look a bit scary. If your dog does know you and you're having a nice game, then that's different. Of course you can smile, but if they're feeling worried and they don't know who you are, then it's best not to show those teeth. And the other thing you mustn't do is get direct eye contact like I'm doing with you now. No staring, not a good thing to do. It can make them feel really scared. So what about if a dog's feeling aggressive and angry? Well, you really need to know when that's happening because you don't want to get bitten. This dog is feeling really angry. Can you see the way he's got his head pointed up towards you or to whoever, whoever it is that he's looking at? He's trying to make himself feel big. He's showing those teeth. His body's really stiff. But the one thing that might be a bit confusing to you is that he's got his tail up. But if this was a video, we would notice that it wouldn't be a nice, big, floppy, waggy tail. It might just move a little bit. So it still might look like a wag, but it won't be like a nice, big, relaxed wag like your happy dog does. It's really important to be able to tell these signs because you don't want to get yourself bitten. And also, if your dog behaves like this around another dog, you need to make sure you pop them on a lead because you don't want them to attack another dog. 
Now look at this dog. He looks really angry. There's a few telltale signs there, probably because he doesn't want to have his feet touched, which is a really silly thing to do like this person's doing if they don't like that. He's showing his teeth and look at those ears really flat back. And can you also see in this picture that that lovely browny black area of his eye, you can see a white bit surrounding his eye and he's showing the whites of his eyes. Now dogs don't normally do that when they're feeling relaxed. You can just see the color of their eye, normally a browny color, sometimes a blue, but you don't normally see the outer side, which is the white bit. Now, this dog is showing the white of its eye and you can see it looks like it's got a really worried face too. And when they show that white bit, the outside of their eye is actually called whale eyes. And sometimes this is a sign they're feeling really nervous about something. Now it might not be that they're feeling nervous of you, but perhaps there's fireworks or something outside that's making them feel really worried. So your job is to make sure that you speak to them in a nice, calm, relaxed voice don't touch them too much because they might be feeling a bit too nervous until they come to you. But this is definitely a sign that they could be feeling really worried. Now, one thing you mustn't do is to jump or to lie on your dog like this. There's a few reasons why, and that's because this dog looks like it's trying to have a nice sleep. And it might be that actually it wants a rest. It doesn't want someone jumping all over him. And the other thing is, is that when dogs get old, sometimes they get sore backs, sore legs, sore hips. And doing this can really hurt. Can you imagine if you had a really sore back and someone laid on you? It wouldn't feel good, right? So this poor pooch probably doesn't like that. Now, you might think that dogs love to be stroked on the top of their head. And this is often the place that we go to first. But actually, some dogs can find it quite nerve wracking having the top of their heads touched, especially if they don't know you. Again, having their legs and their tail touched, especially if they're not your dog, can feel really threatening. So the best thing that you can do is to touch your dog here, around the chest and around the back of their neck until they get used to you. Those are the places they really enjoy. It's better than touching them on the top of their head. So when your dog does start to feel relaxed and starts to really enjoy having a nice cuddle, they might do this. They might roll over on their back and show you their tummy. Because lots of dogs like a nice tummy tickle. But sometimes it can be really confusing because if a dog's feeling a little bit nervous or worried about something, they actually do sometimes roll on their back and show you their tummy to say, I'm not a threat, but I am really nervous. So it's up to you to read their body language. Have they been playing and having a nice cuddle and then rolling onto their tummy? Yeah, they probably want a nice tickle. Or have they looked all worried, remember with that stiff body and their tail down, and now they've rolled onto their, their, their back and showing you their tummy. That probably means that they don't want to be touched at that time. Now, one thing we need to think about is how much exercise does your dog need? That's a really good question because they all need different amounts. One thing to remember is, look at these very cute guys. This is a lovely bunch of puppies. And puppies need their exercise built up slowly over a period of time. That's because they're growing and their muscles need to get stronger. So you mustn't get a really young dog and start taking them out for very long walks because they need to get used to it. So how we work that out is, is that puppies need around five minutes walk per month of age that they are. Let me explain that to make it a bit easier. So if you had a three month old puppy, he would need a 15 minute walk twice a day. When he turns four months, we're going to add five minutes onto that. So we're going to make it 20 minutes twice a day. And when he's five months, we're going to make it 25 minutes twice a day and so on until they become an adult really important because it takes time for them to grow so no rushing you can play games with them instead we're going to go over some cool games later that you can do so when do dogs become adults well that's a really great question look at these guys these are our giant or large breed dogs and they're sometimes called a puppy or a junior up until the age of 15 months old 
that's quite old. So that means that 15 months old, they need all of those months to make sure that they have grown and they've made sure that their legs and their bones and their muscles have all got nice and strong before they start doing too much hard exercise. So you must take your time. You want to protect those lovely legs. And as I say, there's lots of other nice things that you can do to make, make them feel stimulated and tired. And then, you have little dogs like this one. He looks fun, doesn't he? And these smaller or toy breed dogs are sometimes called an adult when they reach nine months old, which means that you can increase their exercise a bit more because they're grown up, they've done most of their growing and they're ready to do a bit more exercise. But just take your time and find out what kind of dog you have. And if they fit into a small or a large category, then you need to work out how much exercise they need and when you can make it more so you can do more with them. Okay, so I want you to meet one of my dogs. Come and join in Sophie's vet school. So this is my lovely old man Chops and he's nearly turning 11 and he'll be 11 in June. And where he's very old now, he likes to sleep lots. He still enjoys his walks and he has a short walk every day, but not as long as what he used to be able to do. And today it's really hot outside. So he's having a little snooze in here, um, in the shade and in the cool, because he feels more comfortable here. You might have noticed he's only got one eye. So last year he hurt his eye um, and he had to have it removed, but he's super clever and he can still see and do all the things that he was able to do when he had two eyes. One thing Chops really does like to do is snore really loudly. So at night time, when he's really in a deep sleep, you can hear him snoring all through the house. And that's something he's done a lot more since he's got older. And, um, he also likes to um, let off lots of farts too. He's got a bit of a stinky bum as Mr. Chops. Uh, but overall, he's a very happy boy and he's doing really well for an old man. And as long as he has lots of rest every day, he keeps himself nice and happy and healthy. So there you saw me talking about my old dog, Chops, who is nearly turning 11, who snores really loudly and has got a bit of a smelly bottom, but he still loves to go out for his short walks. But he can't do what he used to do. He used to do lots of running around and playing, but now he just does a little bit. And that's because he's quite an old boy, like this lovely pooch. This is a nice senior dog, so an older age dog. And what does he like to do? Well, he likes to have plenty of sleep. And you must make sure that dogs get enough sleep so if they don't want to go out for a walk and they don't feel like playing, never force them to do that. Now look at this. These are lovely little puppies. And one thing that's very important to know is, is that puppies sometimes need, especially when they're really young, up to 20 hours of sleep per day. That's so much sleep. Can you just imagine that? You'd hardly be out of bed. You have to keep your pyjamas on all day. So these lovely puppies, they need plenty of sleep, which means that if you do have a puppy and, and they've only just sort of arrived and they're doing lots of sleeping during the day, that's very normal. And you must make sure they get their sleep and rest to help them grow. As dogs get older and become more adult, they normally sleep around 12 to 14 hours. It's still quite a lot of sleep. So make sure you let them have peace and quiet. Now, puppies have very sharp claws and very sharp teeth so make sure when you're playing with them that you're prepared for that because sometimes they can scratch you and they can mark your skin and they don't mean it it's because they're teething they're losing their baby teeth and they're getting their lovely big adult teeth now their adult teeth are normally all through by the age of six months but during that time you might find the odd little baby tooth around your house. If you do and you're lucky to find it, then hold on to it. Maybe you could get your dog a little treat and say the tooth fairy bought it for them. Because the tooth fairy always brings you presents, so why can't the tooth fairy bring your dog a present? So what other forms of exercise are great for our pooches? Well, look at this dog having a lovely swim. Now swimming is 
absolutely brilliant exercise for your dog and many of them love to do it. Some dogs are scared of water. You have to remember, it takes time for them to get to used to the water. So if they've never been swimming before, they might like to go for a little paddle and get used to it slowly. So no sort of throwing them in and making them swim. They need to learn to swim to do their doggy paddle. Did you know that one minute of swimming is the same as a dog running for four whole minutes? So dogs get very tired when they're swimming, so they might need to build themselves up and get used to it over a period of time. It's better for older dogs if the water is a bit warmer, otherwise if it's cold, it can hurt their backs and their legs. So sometimes it's best to only let those dogs swim when the weather is a little warmer. What can you do to encourage your dog to swim? Well, you could throw a ball or something into the water as long as it's safe and there's not too many of you at the sea, like too many waves or, you know, too much of a current out there for them. You could throw something out for them to bring back to you. But when a dog picks up a ball in the water, sometimes they swallow some of the water. So if you're somewhere like the sea, you mustn't do it too much because actually it can really upset their tummies. So you want to find places where it's safe for them to swim and that they can go out, swim and bring something back to you. Now tennis balls, now dogs do actually really enjoy tennis balls but it's much better and much safer for them if they swim to get the tennis ball rather than running on a field or a park to bring it back to you. And that's because when they run towards a tennis ball, they stop really fast, they twist and they turn, they do all sorts of things with their body, which a young dog can do really well. But it means that as they get older, sometimes they get more problems with their legs and their back. So swimming and catching a ball or getting a ball is much better than running and grabbing a ball. Now, what else could we throw for our dogs or not throw for our dogs? Well, what's something I don't want you to throw for your dogs are sticks. We know dogs sometimes like to find sticks and to pick them up, but throwing them is actually really dangerous. As a vet, I've seen some nasty injuries with dogs getting stick injuries from chasing the stick. And that's because someone's thrown it, it's dug into the ground and they've put their mouth on it while it's sticking up. Can you imagine? I've seen some awful injuries to their mouths and some wounds on their bodies, some needing stitches and they've been poorly for a while after, which has meant no exercise and sometimes a stay in hospital with me. So don't throw sticks. That can be very, very dangerous. Now, one thing you can do though, is to play games with your dog. Look at this dog playing a really lovely, simple game. And this is what we call mental stimulation. So giving him something to think about. And that's absolutely fabulous because we all focus on how much to walk your dog, but actually they really enjoy thinking and learning too. And there's simple games that you can make and get them to play especially if it's hot outside, because if it's hot outside, you don't want to take your dog for very long walks. And sometimes you don't want to walk them at all, but you do want them to have fun. So you can do something simple like that picture where there was just the three cups and there was a treat hidden under one of the cups. So all you'd need to do is put your three cups out and then pop a treat under one of them and see if he can find where it is. Then you have other simple things like this is just an old sock with a water bottle in, which makes a really great cracking sound. And they will really love if you throw that, maybe just a little bit around your garden or something like that, and for them to bring it back to you. And they might want to chew on it and have a little play with it too. And the other thing you can do is get something really simple like a box and just pop a treat into that and close the end. And first of all, you could give it to them to see if they can learn how to open up that box and get the tree out. And eventually you could hide it somewhere in your garden or your house and see if they can find it. Now, I made one for my little dog, Albie, who's coming up for a year old. And all I did was I got a old toilet roll and I folded the end, I popped a treat inside, folded up the other end, and this is what he did with it.
and there he is running away with it saying I'm going to keep this to myself and he did and he played with that for quite a while it took him a fair while to get that tree out and then next time I did the same thing but I hid it somewhere so he had to sniff and find it first and then get the tree out but actually it makes them really tired doing things like that and as I said sometimes it's very important to do things like that because it could be really hot outside. We've been having some lovely hot weather and it's very dangerous to walk our dogs when it's too hot outside. How do you know if it's too hot outside? Well, one simple test you can do is this. Look where this dog is standing. He's on a pavement area. So if you've got an area outside of a bit of pavement or, or um, uh, gravel or cement or tarmac, tarmac area, what you need to do is to take your hand or a bare foot pop it onto the area and if you can't hold it there for a few seconds because it's too hot then it's far too hot for your dog to go out for a walk that means you either need to walk them very early in the morning when it's cooler or late in the evening when it's cooler and then you can just play some games with them but make sure you keep them in the shade during the day and make sure they have plenty of fresh drinking water now when it's hot outside the water can get a little bit warm so you might find that you need to refresh it lots and actually look at this dog having a lovely drink from a bottle this is because dogs actually really enjoy drinking from moving water you don't need to necessarily get a pet fountain even doing something like this is quite fun something else you can do to keep them cool which i made yesterday for my dogs was just to get some banana and mash it up and then pop it into an ice cube tray and make frozen banana ice cubes, something that they can lick and play with and keep them cool. It's okay to give something cool when it's warm outside if they're feeling okay in themselves. The only time that we don't use ice is if they're having something called heat stroke and they're feeling poorly. But it's okay to do things like freezing a bit of fruit for them to play with and lick. But you mustn't use grapes because grapes are really dangerous to dogs. So you mustn't put those in your icy popsicle treats. Now, one thing you must never do is leave your dog in a hot car. Now, I can see in this picture that the window is open. It doesn't matter. It gets far too hot, far too quickly in a car when it's warm outside. Look at this poor dog. The window's open, but he's trying to pant still. Why is he panting? Because panting cools our dogs down. Now that's because they can't sweat through their skin like we can. So we might get a little bit of wetness on our skin and feel a bit sweaty. Dogs can't do that. They sweat through their paw pads. So sometimes when they're walking, you might see little sweaty feet marks. That's because they're sweating through their feet. So they sweat through their feet and they pant to lose heat. And another way they lose heat is through one of my favorite doggy places, their gorgeous noses. I do love a doggy nose and these three doggy noses look very, very lovely. Now you can see these three doggy noses look nice and wet. So a wet nose to a dog basically means when they're breathing, it cools the air down. So the air going into their body feels nice and cool. That's why dogs quite like having a wet, cool nose as it keeps them very cool. And another reason why dogs like having a cool wet nose is because they are amazing sniffers and they have fantastic sense of smell. This dog's having a great old sniff in the grass and actually that grass might be wet so that might be one of the reasons why his nose is getting wetter and the wetter his nose is the stronger those smells are and makes him much more excited and he wants to go looking for more things so a cold wet nose is really great for a dog. But what's one of the main reasons that keeps your dog's nose wet. Ah, I'll tell you. They lick it. <laughs> They've got lovely long tongues. You try and lick your nose. I don't think you'd be able to do it. I don't think your tongue would reach. But dogs have lovely long tongues, which means that they can lick their nose and keep it nice and wet and cool. But does it matter if your dog's nose is warm and dry? Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that they are ill. What it might mean is they've been asleep for a while, they haven't licked it for a while, and that's what's made it a bit drier. And also, some dogs have naturally drier noses than others, 
And dogs that get older, as they get older, you'll find that their noses always still feel a little bit drier than when they were younger. So I've got a younger dog who's about a year old, that's Albie, and his nose is really, really wet and shiny. And then I've got Chops, who's my old boy, and his nose is always a little bit drier. And that's just because one is young and one is old. But what things can make your dog sick or ill? Well, this dog is looking at some naughty things here that would make him ill if he ate them. So in this picture, we have grapes, raisins, and sultanas. Even in small amounts, they can be really dangerous if your dog eats them. So just make sure that you never give them to your dog. And there's chocolate in there. Sadly, dogs have a sweet tooth and they'd love a bit of chocolate, but it's dangerous for them to eat. And we've got onions, avocado, and we've got some nuts there called macadamia nuts. Now you might be sat there worrying right now thinking, hang on a minute, my dog eats nuts because my dog likes a bit of peanut butter. Now, peanut butter is fine to give to your dog and actually it's quite fun to put it inside treats and things or and toys for them to lick and to, to play with. But what you need to do is you need to get your parent or your grandparent or your carer to make sure that this big word here, oh, where are we gone? Oh, there. This big word here called xylitol isn't in the peanut butter. This is a sweetener and it can be dangerous to our dogs. So peanut butter is fine, but you just make, sh make sure that you get an adult to double check that the peanut butter that you are giving doesn't have this nasty stuff in. What other things could you feed your dog? Well, look at this pooch. He's gnawing on a bone. And some bones can actually be quite good for your dog and for their teeth. Now you can see that this bone is what we call a raw bone, so it hasn't been cooked. Cooked bones can be really dangerous, so don't give cooked bones. But some people feed their dogs what's called a raw diet, which means they feed those raw meaty bones most days, and it can be good for your dog's teeth. But just make sure that you supervise them if they have anything like that, and if they're eating it too fast, then take it away, but never feed cooked bones. And what else could you feed your dog if you don't want to feed something like bones? Well, they do like some vegetables, and this is a good one, a simple carrot. And carrots actually help to clean their teeth too, which is brilliant, because let's face it, dogs can get smelly breath. And if you're, get, if you're a good pet owner, then you might actually get used to your dog having their teeth clean. Sometimes it can take a while, and they do have to have special meat-flavoured doggy toothpaste, but giving them a carrot maybe every other day or maybe even one a day can help with their teeth. Not too many as they've still got sugar in them and we don't want our dogs to get too fat. Now I said to you earlier that dogs have a sweet tooth and they do. Look at this pooch eyeing up a bit of cake there. He's thinking, yeah, I'm going to have that. But you're not going to have that because it's too naughty for you. Dogs do have a sweet tooth. Now, they have several um, sweet taste buds on their tongue and there's something else that's really cool. They have a special taste bud that makes water super tasty to them. They actually love water and they have a special taste bud on their tongue that attracts them to water, but it also attracts them to naughty sweet foods too. So what sweet foods could you give as a nice treat that are safe for dogs? Well, one thing that I absolutely love is a bit of pumpkin. Now, I'm not talking about a great big pumpkin like this and you have to go out and try and buy one. You can get pumpkin in tins in supermarkets and actually it tastes quite sweet for our dogs. You can make nice simple treats with them or you can add them to their food every day. A little bit of pumpkin, maybe a couple of teaspoons. One great thing about that is it's brilliant for their tummies. So not only do you treat them with something a bit sweet, you also look after their lovely tummies and make sure they stay nice and healthy. Now, another thing that you can do for your dog, and it might take time, especially if they haven't been used to being brushed before, it might take a bit of time to get them used to this. And the best thing to do is if you've got a young dog, get them used to being touched all over, having their mouth touched, their feet touched, their legs touched. The best thing to do, and if, if you've got an older dog and they're not quite used to that, start slowly. Try, try and get them used to being touched all over, and then you can introduce the, a brush and give them a really nice brush. Now, you can see with this dog here that the brush is being used on his back, and that is great. It's great to brush your dogs. 
back area and their chest area, gets rid of any old dead coat, it gives them a good old scratch all over and makes them feel really comfortable. But if you have dogs with very thick curly coats, so I'm thinking something poodly based, or this is a, a, a crossbred dog with a poodle and a cocker spaniel called a cockapoo, and he's got a really, really thick, dense, curly coat. Now, it might be great to brush their back, but the place you really wanna concentrate is their legs, because their legs get really knotted. Can you imagine having knots and things pulling on your skin? It would be really painful. You wanna be able to get a comb through those knots, so you probably need to do it every single day. And if you can't do that and your dog does get knots, then they might need to go and see a doggy hairdresser, so a dog groomer who may say, we're gonna have some clippers and we're gonna clip all of their hair off. That's fine, I'd rather them have a short haircut than lots of knots. But if you wanna keep them with a bit of hair and have a longer haircut, you need to make sure you're combing them every single day. But as the weather is hot outside, some dogs might actually at some point prefer a shorter haircut. So let's have another little look at another area that you might look at, and that is, look at these gross ears. Oh, waxy, smelly, probably not feeling too great right now. It's a good idea to check your ears, dog's ears, or you can check your own ears too if you like, but it's best to check your dog's ears every day if you can, and make sure that they're not looking waxy and they're not smelly, especially if they like going swimming. Sometimes that can make them a bit more waxy and smelly. Make sure you can't see any of that brown stuff and they don't smell, because if they do, they might need to have a clean. If your dog's ears are lovely and clean and healthy, then I normally say don't clean them too often because cleaning them can encourage wax to build up but if they are dirty, it can help get rid of wax. So just get an adult to help you, to give them a clean if they're looking a bit horrible. Now, all I can say from today is, is that your dogs can become your absolute best friend. They'll want to do lots of things with you if you look after them. You don't walk them through hot weather. You don't keep them trapped in a hot car. You don't feed them naughty things like chocolate. You look after their coat and you brush them and comb them and you check their ears. And when they like to have a nice sleep and to be on their own, you let them have their own space. They can become your absolute best friend. And when they do, they might enjoy something like this. You can read one of your favorite stories because dogs love to listen to a good story. You make sure you take care of your dogs because they can be your greatest and bestest friend. Now, here's for the bad bit, homework. What do I want you to do this week? Well, there's a couple of things that I would love you to do. If you can, I'd like you to write a little story about you and your dog, or just a story about your dog, or your dogs, you might have more than one, or if you don't have a dog, maybe a story about a dog that you'd really like to have and why. And I'd also like it if you could make them a little toy. If you've got a spare cardboard box or a um, toilet roll, perhaps like hide a little treat in there and see if you can get them playing with it and finding it. And another thing which might be quite good, you don't have to do all of these things, you can just pick one or two, but you could mash up some of the banana and put it in the ice cube tray and make yourself um, some popsicles for them to lick and keep themselves cool. And if you can't do any of those things, another thing you could do is take a picture of you and your dog doing a little trick. I would love to see anything that you've got to send me and I'd like you to spend the rest of the day doing really lovely things with your dog. And remember, it's quite warm today. So no long walks, but lots of fun play. Now, I'm gonna have a little look across now and see if I have any questions. Let's have a little look and see if you've got any questions for me today. And if I don't get to answer them all, I will try and answer some of them later today. Oh, if I make my dog, uh, if I make a toy, my dog will eat it. <laughs> okay, so absolutely, when you make toys for, um, for dogs, then absolutely, you just need to make sure that you supervise them and that you don't leave them unsupervised. And if they are eating the cardboard, you might have to take it away. But most of them will just rip it apart and get out what they need. Um, oh, do dogs like cats? That's a good question, Faith. 
Now, we've got three dogs and we've got two cats and actually they get on really, really well, but they can take time and sometimes they don't always become friends. It's something you need to do very slowly and never ever shut a dog and a cat in a room together, especially if they don't know each other, but they can become really good friends. Sometimes they just don't like each other and you have to accept that and let them have their space. Oh yeah, bananas are safe. Yes, dogs can have bananas, absolutely. Um, ah, that's, I'm glad I've got some nice comments there. People are enjoying today. What is the worst injury that I've seen, Hayden? Oh my goodness. Oh, I've seen some very nasty things. Um, and sometimes dogs hit by cars. That's why you have to be really careful around the road and have them on a lead. Because even though they might be really well behaved and they walk alongside you, sometimes they only have to see something over the other side of the road and run out. So I've seen broken legs and all sorts of horrible things. Will dogs and guinea pigs be friends? Oh, <laughs> that's a really nice question. And again, a bit like cats, but you don't, can't leave them unsupervised. But sometimes if you're there holding them, they might come up and have some interest as long as neither of them are feeling too nervous. Um, but sometimes you do find that some dogs have unusual friends like rabbits and guinea pigs that they spend lots of time with. And I saw another question on there about do um, big dogs like little dogs. Yeah, they can become great friends. I've seen Great Danes and Chihuahuas become the best of friends. They might look a bit funny walking down the street together, but they become really nice friends. And I'll tell you who's the boss. It's always the little one. It's always the Chihuahua. They're always the bossy ones. And the Great Dane just tell, does what he's told. <laughs> My dog loves cuddles and walks, absolutely. It's so important to give them lots of cuddles, lots of walks, lots of play. I say they can be your absolute best friend. You can tell them stories. You can tell them if you're worried about anything, they'll sit and they'll listen because they are great listeners too. Dogs rock, yes they do. Ah, now that's a tricky question. What is my favorite animal? Well, I love all animals. Um, and I've got dogs, cats and rabbits and I really love horses and I love guinea pigs and actually next week we're covering hamsters and guinea pigs and all our little rodents and I love them all but sometimes when I'm working as a vet I have to say I do find that I get the most love from a dog in the vet practice because cats are just really scared and sort of sometimes they can be there with their claws out at me and then other animals are just feeling really nervous but sometimes dogs will wag their tail towards me sometimes cats will give me cuddles too but when i'm out of work i just love all animals they're all absolutely lovely and we should take care of them all let's see what else you had on there how do we know we've got the right diet for a dog? That is a great question. Well, there's a couple of things really. Now they shouldn't, they should, let's talk about poo. We haven't had a bit of poo today, have we? So let's cover poo. So when a dog has a good diet, they pass nice, good, firm poos. If it's a bit sloppy, oof, and not very nice and difficult to pick up, then that sometimes means that the diet isn't right and it's not suiting them. And another thing is when the diet isn't right, sometimes they, put on weight and they get too fat or sometimes they look a bit too skinny so you need to make sure they look like the right body size they should be and often a diet will tell you how much to give and the other thing is if the diet's wrong sometimes your dog gets really itchy and they get sore eyes and itchy skin and that might be because they're allergic to something that they're eating <laughs> oh, that's lovely my dog thinks that his, the guinea pig is its puppy as long as they're having a lovely time together that's absolutely fine and of course dogs you know like any animals they still have that nurturing thing about them and sometimes they will meet another animal and think I'm gonna look after you and that's just really sweet in fact you're really lucky because it's nice as long as they're getting on really well you are lucky that they are great friends I did see something oh how can you stop a cavalier King Charles cavalier snoring um you need to get some earplugs <laughs> you'll never stop them snoring I know what it's like my springer snores it almost makes the whole house vibrate I did see something on there about um why do um oh sorry Milo, oh, Milo the dog, he's a cockapoo and he's eight months old. Make sure you do lots of brushing because remember they've got that really thick coat and get them used to it now. And I did see a question on there about why do dogs bark at birds? My dog does the same. I think it's something, you know, along the lines of anything that's moving. 
And of course, some dogs, especially if they're certain dogs, like working dogs, so spaniels and labradors and things like that, sometimes you know they, they are bred to pick things up and retrieve things and they might run after something like a bird that's flapping. So it's really in their nature. It's often what they're born and bred to do. Oh, I've seen, oh, my dog loves puppies. You are all telling me, love it. Oh, why does my dog try and eat bees? Again, something flying away. They think it's a game. Try and encourage them not to do it. If they did accidentally get hold of one, then the best thing to do is to give them something cool, like those banana popsicles, try and keep their mouth cool, and to keep an eye on them. Obviously let your mums and dads and parents and carers know that that's happened, and keep a close eye, because some of those end up having to come and see the vet. You have asked me some amazing questions, and what I'm going to do is this afternoon, I'm going to have a little read through, and see if I can answer some of your amazing questions. Next week, we're going to cover our hamsters and our rodents, uh, like our, our guinea pigs and gerbils and things. So lots of things about that. I'm going to post your cat homework that you did for me last week, later on today. I'm going to look forward to seeing some of your dog homework. And you know what I'm going to really look forward to? I'm going to look forward to seeing you all again next week for Sophie's Vet School, because you are all absolutely awesome. Take great care of your dogs today. Have lots of fun with them. And I will see you next week, you lovely lot. I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.